first view of the start of last week's Toyota Atlantic Championship event not only presented Catherine Lake with the stark reality that she would not that day claim another set of checkers, it delivered the cold message that her title hopes were, in all reality, dashed. One can only imagine what the 24-year-old Britain must have been thinking as her crew valiantly labored to get her back into the fray. Yet the young driver who has so confidently set the standard for all other women competing in motorsports must surely understand opportunities for more 2005 honors abound. For Tony's Kazmitz, this last minute, last ditch challenge to take the lead from Andreas Wirth was classic number six. Unfortunately for the star-crossed Estonian, his luck did not hold and once again he painfully surrendered to the will of the fates, his dreams of a title nearly as dim as Catherine's. Today's race for Kazmitz must be a tour de force, a defeat of the bad omens that have seemingly followed him from race to race over the second half of the year. For Charles Olsman, his Denver experience netted him a disappointing third, a position for which he had to drive his blue number 11 as hard as at any time throughout the season. Olsman has maintained the points lead for most of the year, but now faces a new threat to his leadership. German Andreas Wirth, winner of that Denver street fight and the man now best positioned to take the title from the Dutchman. This was the scene in Denver as a joyful Andreas Wirth concluded a flag to flag total domination of the event. And with that win, he became the fifth driver to claim a victory in the 32nd season of this, the world's most prestigious open wheel development series. Now, the series moves to the longest permanent road course in North America, Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, for the next to last contest of the year. And we might, just might, mind you, see a champion crown today. If Zolzman can gain enough points to leave with at least a 35-point advantage over second place, he will depart carrying the crown of champion. That possibility, though, got a bit more muddied, if you will, in morning warm-up. Watch this. Two of the fastest cars and points leader Zolzman involved in this incident. All three of the cars severely damaged. That's Andreas Berth, who is physically, well, we're not sure about that scenario. He was transported and uh, is being observed. The cars have rolled out. We want to get you right to the starting lineup and give you the rundown as to what the deal is. Now, we're going to give you the lineup based on how they qualified. We'll update you on who will start and where they might start as we get there. I'm Greg Kramer along with Brian Till and Calvin Fish. Here is the grid. Tonis Kazmitz and Andreas Wirth had the front row, and Kazmitz has been blindingly quick. The second row, Dan DeLeo and Bobby Wilson, again involved in that incident. He was the third car. Then in the third row, Catherine Leggett, David Martinez, row four, points leader, Charles Olsman, struggling all weekend anyway, and Antoine Bissett. Row five, Al Unser the third and Christopher Fry. Row six, Chris Meninga and Alan Schuto, the Denver pole sitter. Row seven, Kyle Kelly and Daryl Liskey. Row eight, Chris Soliotis and Lee Atkins. And row nine is Bob Siska. Well, that's how they qualified, but the question is, Calvin Fish, after that morning warm-up, what are the developments? Well, there's certainly been frenzied activity down here in the paddock. Quick update. Bobby Wilson is out of the event. Too much damage to that car, couldn't be repaired, he's done. Charles Walsman, there was severe damage to the car. What they did, they scavenged the back end of his spare car. Now, because the original monocoque has taken place in the race today, he can keep his qualifying position. Now, for Andreas Wirth, it's a bit more complicated. Initially, they checked him out here at the track, sent him to Sheboygan Hospital for an MRI. They released him, he was on his way back. It was gonna be a scramble to get here, but finally they called him and said, listen, there's a problem with this scat can. He will not, the cat scan, he will not start the race here today. That's big developments, Brian. That is a huge development as far as the championship goes. Andreas Wirth basically now taken out of it. But let's look at this racetrack where we're going to compete today. High speed circuit, a little over four miles. Aerodynamics really important here in one and especially in the kink. But some great passing zones as well for these Atlantic cars. Turn five, turn eight, and turn 12, Canada Corner. Great, great racetrack for these Atlantic machines, Greg. And we're gonna give you some of the views through that section of track and the Gale Company number two of Christopher Pry, qualified 10th. He'll be carrying one of our onboards. Also, the gentleman who has been rocket quick here since he set foot on this track this weekend, the gentleman who qualified on pole, Tonis Kazmitz, the flex over to brace of Swift. He is starting on the inside of the front row. And uh, I'll tell you, we're gonna talk about just how quick he has been here it has been impressive indeed and uh, we anticipate having a third onboard camera as well from Al Unser the third he qualified in the ninth spot the BOS poker.net 
Swift, and he is number 10. So we'll be riding on board with him as well. The field now coming up toward turn 14, lights off in the pace car. So we expect this 11th round, the second to the last round of the championship, to get underway. For Tonis Kasmitz up front, as he has all weekend, he has one mission. He's got to win it. End of story. End of story, and he has been blazingly fast in every qualifying session and consistent as well. I watched him in qualifying yesterday. He put in several lap times that would have put him on the pole. Up the hill they come, looking for the green flag, and it flies. And David Martinez, a big move. We'll have to see. That looked a little early. Meanwhile, we hop on board, looking back at the pack. Everybody coming up, and here we go. And what a start by Catherine Legg as uh, she has gotten by, and... Kazmitz has dropped back to the third spot, so Catherine Lake timed that beautifully. Kazmitz now taking a look. They're punching up into three. Everybody wisely decides to set low. Contact. That is one of the new Arms Up Motorsports cars that has gone around. I don't know if that is Meninga or the, uh, uh, it is Chris Meninga, so he is parked at the side of the track. Meanwhile, already battling continuing, and this is that long run down into turn five. Great drafting area, and Kazmitz goes for the move. Did he get it? Watching up front there, Kazmitz now takes second away. It's like Kazmitz, one, two. Tremendous start by Catherine Legg. She timed it perfectly and used that draft, and the draft is going to be big in these Atlantic machines. The, the drivers can see anywhere between four and ten miles an hour down these long straightaways if they run in the, gra in the draft. Catherine Legg right now has been able to pull out three or four car lengths over Kazimitz. The Kazimitz just needs to be calm, cool, and collected. He knows he has the fastest car and has had the fastest car all weekend long. Interesting talking to Catherine earlier in the weekend. It was her first time here, and she said, these straights are so long. You see the corners for so far coming up. You want to start turning in way too early. She said, you really have to get your head into it to wait and be patient on your turn in. There she is, but look at Kazimitz in attack mode already. You get the feeling Kazimitz has no time for anybody here this weekend. He wants the lead. He wants to to win he wants to win big here he goes down the inside and leg what just wise move on her part she's had, had enough contact she's been involved but look at her come back and drops the tire well, i said she was smart and being being uh, comfortable and casual not the case Catherine leg ultra aggressive and proving it right there and two very different approaches right now Catherine leg is out of the championship but she wants to show what she's made of and what kind of a race car driver she is tunise kazimitz on the other hand he is still in this championship, so he needs to be careful, but he also needs to win. If Solzman doesn't finish second, Kazman still has a shot at this, and that's why he knows he's got to win. He's got to earn every point, makes the pass on Catherine, gets it done early enough that it shouldn't affect his turn in, and thus his exit speed. This time he makes it stick. Well, if she can stay close enough, she will get the draft as they come off of turn three and make that long run down into turn five. Three long straightaways on this racetrack where the draft is going to uh, play a big part. We're going to go back now and take a quick look at that start. It was fantastic. Now, remember, with uh, Andreas Wirth and Bobby Wilson out, two of the top four qualifiers, it opened some gaps up and let some people be able to play with it. But look at Catherine Legg right there, Brian. Brilliant move. Man, she was already out of line before the flag flew. It'll be interesting to see if there's any comment by the officials about that, but a tremendous start as well. It timed it beautifully, Greg, absolutely beautifully. And there's the spin by Chris Meninga right there. A couple of seasons of Indy Lights racing. I'm gonna give you another view here. Watch right here. There he goes. I don't know whether he got a little help from behind or whether he just turned in a little too aggressively as we're looking back from Unser. It looked like Antoine Bissette turned in and, and Meninga was there and he kind of backed out of it to try to avoid that contact and just lost it there at the apex. Look at the dirt that you see coming up off the racetrack. We've already had a Trans Am race at the track today and there's a lot of debris out there. That's the other thing these drivers need to take into account. It's a very different track than they were on earlier this morning in warm-up. Tony Skazmich, you see him driving away already. He has been seven or six or seven tenths clear of the field since they rolled off the transporter. Brilliant. We are back in Road America, and you ride on board with race leader Tony Skazmich. Looking back at Catherine Legg, uh, young driver Daniel DeLeo is sitting in the third spot. Uh, he's got some pretty good credentials. He ran Barber Pro Series in 02 and 03, took second there, and last year was second in the Star Mazda Pro Series Championship. There he is in third and having a very solid run. Those are the ex-Lynx cars and this new team, Arms Up Motorsports. Great name for a racing program, uh, but two very talented drivers as well. Two very talented drivers. You had to give both of those guys a lot of credit. 
coming in here, not really spending a lot of time in Atlantic cars, and DeLeo has taken to this Atlantic machine like a like a duck to water and has been quick ever since he sat in the car. There is Antoine Bissette, who now has the fourth spot. I've been watching Zwolzman, was up the third at one point, and said, well, that looks pretty good. He is dropping back just a little bit now, because there's Bissette. There now is Unser, and Zwolzman has dropped back to essentially six spots. So he's lost some spots. And David Martinez and that Rosh friend swim is really starting to heap some pressure on him. And a young guy by the name of Christopher Pry, who's been a very pleasant surprise to this weekend in that mix as well. So Zwolzman, they may have got the car fixed. The question is, uh, Brian, how well is it fixed in terms of the setup on the car? Well, the other thing that you need to keep in mind, too, is that Charles Zwolzman needs to concentrate on his championship. They have not had a fast car all weekend long. Felt like they were down on power a little bit. And he needs to say, if this is a seventh place car, I'm going to finish in seventh. He can't force it into a position where it's not going to go. Otherwise, he risks damaging the car and falling out of the race. One of his top competitors is not in the race, so that's given him a little breathing room. We know that Kazimitz is charging out in front. But Charles needs to be mature, really keep his wits about him and say, I'm going to do the best I can with what I have today. It's not an ideal situation, but he's got to soldier through to the finish, take the points, and unfortunately, it's probably going to go to right. the last round of Montreal. And as you mentioned, with, of course, Worth being out, as you take a look at the race ended now, there's your scenario. Kazman's only 30 points adrift. He would still be alive in the championship. The set leg and Worth done. And now we see Martinez just drives by Zolzman. So the car just not that fast uh, generally. And then after that crash, maybe uh, even worse still. But as you pointed out, with Berth gone, it gives him a little more room to work with. And if he can leave here still with 15, 20 points in hand, that makes it you know much more comfortable, at least going into Montreal. Clearly, he'd like to finish as far up as possible and pad that as we hop on board once again with Christopher Pry. Young driver, this is his first time in an Atlantic car. Uh, he ran some Barber National stuff. Uh, which is uh, a pace down for these cars, and he has adapted incredibly well. A lot of experience at this track, and a very good uh, go-kart driver. Well, and track knowledge is, is huge. I mean, you come to a place that's like this, and it's really good to have track knowledge, and now he's all over the back of Charles Rolsman. But these Atlantic machines, they take some getting used to. There's a particular driving style that you have to adopt it's very different than certainly a go-kart or the barber cars that he drove so he's got to come to grips with the car and that's going to take a while you can't just step in to a series like this a different type car than you're used to driving um, different speeds yeah. different horsepower different aerodynamic and mechanical grip levels and expect to just be right there at the front i think he's doing a good job fabulous job there's Olsman in front right behind pry by the way is kyle kelly who has really come alive in the latter half of this championship actually uh, a couple of those new street course runs he was very quick and look at the run that probably gets here Zolzman just making it a little more difficult uh, but you can't move over and defend too much because that runs afoul of the rules and Zolzman has to let him through and here comes Kelly at least thinking about it to give it a try can't do it Zolzman hangs on but uh, Zolzman is hurt yeah you know that they've put that car together. They've made it out of two right. cars, so that's not going to be ideal. And like I said, it felt like they were down on horsepower a little bit this weekend. They haven't had the straight line speed that they've wanted, so he's definitely not driving the ideal car right now. And as we said, he just needs to keep his wits about him, and that's hard to do when this is happening to you almost every lap, every straightaway. That's streaming by. Yeah, Kyle Kelly makes the pass, and Alan Schuto, the gentleman who sat on pole in Denver, now coming up hard to stern. We'll be right back. When you're running on these long straightaways at Road America, it really throws a number of variables at the teams in terms of their race setup. One, of course, is how much downforce should I run today? Do you either set the wings up to really get through the corners effectively, or do you lay these down so they get down the straightaways a little bit quicker? The next thing is the effect of the draft. We're going to see two and three car drafts out there today. Here we have the car set up nose to tail. The effect of this leading car is to punch a hole in the air. It's going to allow this following car to run into it, effectively be a little bit quicker. That then throws another question at the team. Which top gear ratio do they want to run today? Let's bring in race engineer for Polestar Racing, Jim Griffith, to answer that question. And Jim, tell us of the effects of the draft that you've seen in practice and qualifying and the decision that you had to make today. The biggest draft we see is coming out of the carousel and the long straightaway back there. We can actually cut a second off the lap time and gain six to eight miles an hour in top speed. And then we have to make the decision. Do we gear for the draft or we gear to run by ourselves? 
Well, that is the mix, and uh, you're always here at Road America. It's the trade-off. Grip in the corners, speed on the straights, and you tend to lean towards speed on the straights because you're on them so much. Except for the fact that turn one is a really <laughs> high-speed corner. The kink is a very high-speed corner. These cars, when from the time they come out of turn eight and go into the carousel, are flat all the way to Canada Corner. That yeah. means your right foot is down on the floor, all the way through the carousel flat, through the kink flat, and down into Canada Corner. So you gotta have some aero. But the draft really is difficult as well. If you gear and you gear not to run in the draft, and you get in the draft, then you'll be on the rev limiter. But if you gear a, a, a really a tall gear so that you can run in the draft and not be on the rev limiter, and you get left alone on the racetrack and you don't have a drafting partner, then you're going to be slow because you literally you can't pull that gear unless you got a car in front of you. Well, I'll tell you, it's a chess match in terms of setup. Antoine Bisset, the orange car right there, folks, is the man on the move. He has taken that unique auto design entry by Dan DeLeo and has moved up into the third spot. And he is really hooked up right now. In fact, running down Catherine Legg. Remember now, Bisset won at Toronto in the street fight. Uh, just a remarkable season, I think, for a guy who started off his career in sedans and rally cars, has done very little comparatively open wheel experience, and has adapted absolutely brilliantly. I mean, just look at it, close up on Catherine under braking into Canada Corner. And those cars, night and day different than the high technology of one of these Toyota Atlantic machines. Ground effects, big slick tires, excellent braking capability. I mean, as you said, to take those skills and then apply, oh, <laughs> slide coming out of 14, you don't want to do that. That ruins that momentum up that hill and down the long front straight away. But to take those skills that you learn in those types of cars and then apply them here, he's adapted very, very well. And I think we should point out, you see the cars every once in a while as they go over the curbs, these little puffs of smoke. It's not actually anything from the engine or the like. They've got, uh, it's like a real hard board underneath jab the car. Jab rock, yeah. And they hit it, and it scrapes on those curbs and uh, just the... Uh, generates the as you see that, that right there those puffs of smoke so uh, other than pounding over curves and you know that can be kind of tough on cars other than that it is not uh, an issue for the cars right now and uh, well I tell you Bissette right now looking very very strong Calvin well what a difference a week makes last week in Denver John Brooks you saw the first victory of the season for your team and here today you have the heartbreak of Andrask being injured and not making the start tell us the update from the doctors what have they said about his condition well, we just found out as they were coming back from the hospital that they did find that there was a fracture of, uh, I guess, the T6 and the T8 vertebrae. And he'll be out for the rest of the year, unfortunately. Because that young, that young man has been doing such a great job for us all season long, and he's really gotten into the swing of things. All we wanted to do is get better and be just as strong and continue to move on in motorsports. I may start to hear that news. Thank you very much. Very sorry indeed, uh, just hate to see it, and he was, once they got that car dialed for him and, and set it up for him and, and, at Denver, he just dominated. Crushing news, our, our thoughts are with him and for a speedy recovery, but I mean, Kazimitz right now is the one that is going to be taking that championship fight back to Charles Wolzman as Wolzman dropping back 10th right now. And the interesting thing here, watching the last couple of laps, Catherine Legg has run the last two laps significantly quicker by a few tenths, faster than Tony's Kazimitz. This is the first time we've seen anybody this weekend who has been able to run even close to Tony's, let alone faster. So, and you can see it as she has definitely closed things up just a little bit. The margin had been up to about a second and a half, and it is uh, now under a second. She's getting close enough to start benefiting from the draft off of Kazimitz's car. And if she can kind of hang there, she will slowly be pulled up closer and closer and closer to him. And he also wonders, she's a pretty savvy race car driver playing the student right now. She doesn't have anywhere near the experience that Kazimitz has on this track. She's been able to follow him for a number of laps. Where is he turning in? Where is he going to throttle? And it is paying off, perhaps, with big dividends. That margin, I said, was a second and a half. It is now less than half a second. Catherine Legg on the move. On board once again with Christopher Pry running in the eighth spot. And the Gale Company Swift and having a very good run. That is Charles Volsman, I believe, behind him, who has been relegated now to the ninth position. And uh, very impressive drive. Watch the onboard lap from the onboard and also the, uh, the camera cut of 
Christopher Pry when he set his qualifying time, when he really went for it on the lap, and we really weren't sure. We didn't have a lot of knowledge about him. It's like, is he going to throw it away in one of these big cars? Is he going to be all over? He was extremely aggressive and spot on and cracked off a very solid lap. Watch the draft work here. Wow. You can see Charles Wolzman just being pulled closer and closer. That's that area that I talked about, out of the carousel, through the kink, and down to Canada Corner. The longest section, it's almost a mile from the exit of turn eight down to Canada Corner where these Atlantic cars are flat for almost a mile. Well, we had that shot. You can see the two elements on the wing. If, you, if you've been following the series for a while, you remember the amazing year that a guy named Patrick Carpentier had to try and find speed here. They took the entire top element and the two side fins off of their rear wing and ran that little flat thing. You can't do that now, but I mean, that was... For good how, reason. How, yeah, <laughs> smart. And by the way, I said that was Zwolzman, and that was 24, Kyle Kelly, who's gone by Zwolzman and is coming after him. And Zwolzman followed down the order, and you can see right now that margin. He had 30 the last time we looked at it. Because he's dropped back to ninth right now, it's only 21 points that he would be clearer. So Zolzman is watching that big, big, big points lead evaporate. Yeah, I know it's a bitter pill to yeah. swallow, but he's got to stay focused on finishing this race as well as he can. But once again, if he only has a seventh, eighth, ninth place car, that's where he needs to finish. He cannot throw the championship away yeah. by trying to get something that that machine's just not going to be able to give him. And Tony Skazmitz, for all the speed we've seen out of him on, on many occasions this year, has had moments uh, where things have gone awry, like the pass in Denver and a couple other things. So Zwolzman just has to do the job. Captain Lake's starting to hound Kazmitz just a little bit. And the other thing for Zwolzman, every time we have talked to Carlos Bobeda, the team owner, he has said one thing that impressed him about that guy is nothing flusters him. There's no emotion. When he gives you information, it's just... It's just technical, and it's it's there, there's no emotion thrown into the mix. So maybe I mean Zolzman may be just perfectly cut to deal with this type of a situation. But Kazmitz, well, right now he's getting some pressure. Well, he's looking at his mirror, and there's that one mile section of flat out Atlantic competition there, where they can stay in that throttle for over a mile. And you see Catherine able to close the gap ever so slightly because of the draft, but Bissett as well. In that last lap by, Catherine Legg and Antoine Bissett turned the exact same lap time to within a hundredth of a second. So, boy, it's a tough, tough story. A little bit earlier, we heard from the team owner of Andreas Worst team. Oh, well, first of all, there's the problem. That's Christopher Pry. The first uh, little glitch we've seen, and he is, that's Canada Corner, and he is deep, deep, deep into the gravel there. He, that, he's going nowhere without help. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if that doesn't bring right. out a full course caution, and if it does, then that battle up front, they're going to be, they're close already, but that's going to put them right there together, and then it'll be restart time. Uh, you see the smoke off the right side, just locked up the right side, brakes just a little bit, see the right front lock. He does a good job, tries to modulate the brakes, release the pedal a little bit so the tire will turn. But at that point in time, when you've already braked at the very la last moment, there's not, not much room for air. And you see that he ends up in the gravel trap. It looks like they may be able to extricate him from that gravel trap without going full course caution. Right. And that is huge news for Tony Skazmans. I tell you, that's one thing that the uh, track crew here at Road America is very adept at, is clearing cars out of the gravel without needing full course cautions. We'll be back. We are back to the 11th and penultimate round of this Toyota Atlantic Championship. 17 total laps in this race, and uh, we are just about to complete lap 10 on board with your leader, Tony Skazmitz, who has now been able to find about three tenths. It was down to about four tenths of a second. It's now up to about seven tenths of a second, and uh, Tony's just giving it everything he's got. One thing I noticed watching them, you know, going into Canada Corner, where it was the best passing opportunity after that mile long, you said that great draft. It still looks to me like Catherine's turning in just a little bit early. She's just cheating in a little bit there, which really hurts you on the exit, and you lose the gap to be able to do something up the hill out of 14, yep. correct? That's absolutely correct. But then you need to think about, too, where do I want to make passes? Yeah. You know, we talk about the draft a bit around this racetrack. Sometimes you're better off to be content to not take a pass even when you've got the opportunity to do it because if you make that pass going into, let's say, turn one or even turn five, you know that you then have to deal with that other long straightaway and the opportunity for your competitor to pass you back. Yeah, absolutely. And as we said, uh, we, we heard earlier from Andreas' first team owner, I think Andreas is with Calvin now. He is indeed, Greg. Very sad pitch. We see his car here in pit lane. You're in your uniform and Andreas. Tell us two things. How are you feeling? And talk about the emotion of your season coming to an end prematurely. I'm not really feeling 
good. I've got a lot of pain in my back. It was a really hard hit in the warm-up this morning. Just come back from the hospital and they told me that I've, that I've got a comp compression in my lower back. So it looks like that I can't race or I can't finish my season. I had a really great car this morning, the warm-up, I think I, I would... I would definitely could have fight for the win, but what should I say? You know, that's it's hard to explain what a driver feels when he get told that he cannot drive the next races and finish his season, especially on second place in the championship. But I just want to thank my team for the great job this year and thank one of my uh, my my engineer and my sponsors and everyone who supported and helped me. And I'm just trying now, I'm just looking now to get healthy again and test for the next season and that's it. Well, we're sorry to see you out, congratulations on a great season and uh, come back strong next year. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so hard actually, to hear the emotion in the voice as he's talking about that. And he has had a great season without any question. Uh, just been a fabulous year for him and uh, to see it come to an end, the reigning Formula BMW champion, and uh, what a what a run he's had. You can see the the emotion there. Seven podiums he was able to put together in 2005, and got that first big win for Brooks Associates Racing on the streets of Denver. It was a dominant performance, and when Kazmans came rocketing underneath, he just let him go, turned back underneath, a very savvy move, and drove back on through, and uh, was able to get the win. So much promise, and now you just got to sit and watch. You see him in the driver's suit, uh, ho so hopeful it's not happening. He so wants to be in the car, even in the pain that he's in. If they told him it was okay, I'm sure he'd get in and drive it. You heard the emotion in his voice, the disappointment, disappointment on our part as well. Absolutely, and you get another look at the beautiful lake here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Kazmitz Lake Bissette. We are back. We are on board right now with, I believe, Al Unser and uh, it's David Martinez who sits back in the sixth spot and <laughs> out of the corner of my eye, I'm seeing Brian do the pull to me, pull to me, just enjoying the oh. grab. Oh, Unser dropping a left rear big time. Here comes Martinez. Not a lot you can do in this section of track. Not going to get through there. He could make a move into 14, but once again, we talked about is that where I really want it to happen? He's positioned perfectly now to get a good draft down the front straight away and, uh, you know, he needs to get up there right on the back of Allen, pressure him a little bit. He right. knows he just made a mistake. Get him while he's still rattled. <laughs> Coming out of 12, you get a run on somebody. Other corners, you may drop a tire and drive in the dirt. Problem there is you got this bridge. <laughs> uh, you just don't want to get off of it. But look at Martinez now, closing in, not quite enough. And wisely, that says something about Martinez because he did move over and then give up the exit. He stayed put, maybe he can get him into five. That's very, very impressive. And Al Unser, who's running up in front of him, having an interesting race in Cleveland, running with Chris Dyson, launched onto the front straight. And at Denver, got into a great back and forth battle for uh, parts of it and ended up uh, bringing home a seventh place finish. But it was hard fought indeed. And uh, Al Unser now his first full, well, now full season he joined about halfway through and he and martinez right now brian are in a war in a good unsure tradition he is not afraid to mix it up he and martinez really going at it it looks like they may have a little bit faster car right now he needs to really pick and choose al needs to kind of get his wits about him again forget the mistake that he made put his head back down and drive yep, fifth place is where he was running with martinez in sixth and that is where they continue to run Kyle Kelly behind them in seven. And uh, five laps to go now. So we're, this one's winding down. The other thing that these young drivers need to do is they probably never run on a racetrack this long where the draft is this effective. And there's, a, there's an art to it. You've got to figure out how it works. But when can I use it to my advantage? And when, if I don't play it right, does it become a disadvantage? I think that's what we're seeing right now. Martinez dropped off a little bit. I think Al, like I said, put his head back down and said, come on, man, get your act back together. Get back down on the wheel and go. And he's been able to pull out a little bit of a gap. But Martin is still close enough that if he can hang with him onto the front straightaway, he'll be able to get back into that draft. 
Well, we were talking about a couple other things just a little while ago. We watched Antoine Bissette, I think it was Canada Corner, dropped uh, almost the whole car off the outside, managed to save it, but lost a lot of ground and is now falling back into the grasp of Ben DeLeo, who was coming after him fairly aggressively. And by the way, folks, you just saw the graphic the last time. Catherine Legg had the fastest lap. Now Kazmitz takes it back. Meanwhile, here comes Martinez again, heading into one. He's not quite close enough. And he starts to make that move, and he can't pull out like that because as soon as he does, he gets into the dirty air, and that's going to slow him down. So, Kazmitz continues to lead. Catherine Legg and Bissett, your top three. DeLeo and Unser, your top five. And here's the rest of the top ten. Again, on board with Unser. There they are. Unser and Martinez. This battle for fifth. Allen needs to turn his mirrors down. <laughs> Dave's there. And Dave needs to use that draft. But it looks like even in the draft, he can't get anything done. Right. We'll go back to that gear selection that we talked about earlier. You're wondering if... Maybe they didn't put that, that gear in that car that it allows him to draft. If he gets the draft and gets right up behind him, but then gets into the rev limiter. Boy, he, he got a run here. Yep. Let's see. He's got the good run. This is down to Canada. Tried it. I'm, oh. I'm thinking that Martinez may have the shorter gear, and he may be getting into the rev limiter right there at the end of those long straightaways. All that draft that you've got working for you is for naught if you can't get alongside the guy. If you start to bang into the rev limiter at the end of the straightaway, your acceleration stops. Draft or no. Well, you know, as you say that, a couple of laps ago when we watched it, we came off the onboard and had the actual camera shot, which is Mike, and I heard what I thought was a stuttering sound. Now, this time he got the run much, much sooner. Question is, once he pulls out, look at this. We also have a change in, uh, I believe, that is DeLeo going by the set, too. We saw, here we go. Oh, somebody off big. That may have been in that battle for three. That is Bissette has gone off. I thought I saw DeLeo going underneath him, and it looks like it's gone away. Serious damage to the left front corner of that car. Martinez now, as a result, by my reckoning, will be fourth. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. Obviously, a car off there in turn one into the gravel. Will they bring out a full course caution for this? With only three laps to go, that would not be good for the battle that we just saw. Let's see. Bissette looks very unhappy. We'll not well pleased. It's been an interesting season for him. He had a great pass to win in Toronto, and that was his first win. But then San Jose, bang, he had contact there. That was a corner that caught a lot of guys out. Back and forth battle with Zolzman in Denver recently. Had Bissette taking a fourth place finish, and it was a very hard fought one at that. Uh, Antoine Bissette looking very quick here, but as you said, he got out of that car. The last thing he looked was happy. I mean, you're never happy going off, but he looked downright angry. Yeah, we were looking at the battle there between Unser and Martinez, so we just saw it go out from view there and then saw the end results. We don't know really what happened, but he did not look happy at all. Kazmitz able to put a lap car in between himself and Catherine Legg, and that's going to be big for him because that's going to hold Catherine up to that section. Calvin? Well, we expect Tunis to really streak away from the field with the pace that he had in qualifying. His qualifying laps he did by himself. Most of the other guys needed a toe to do a draft. So, but today the team has said we have a motto. We must not beat ourselves. And we believe that Tunis is really running kind of a conservative race. He has the pace. Just watching the gap. The team have double-checked every mechanical part on that race car last night. They're very confident. But the streak of luck they've had recently, anything can happen. But they may be right back in this championship hunt if he can hold on for a victory here at Road America. Well, the interesting thing is every time we see Catherine set a fast lap, Kazmitz takes it the next time by. Every time she closes up to within half a second, suddenly it's back to a second. Uh, I think he is driving a very savvy race at this stage. And the other thing to point out, folks, is with the retirements we've had, the cars that have broken or crashed, suddenly Zolzman, he can back up into the uh, points just a little bit here. to the white flag next time, Brian. Looking at the back of Kazmitz's car, you can see Catherine Legg in second, but she is now well clear of the draft, so she's not going to get that advantage if she was going to have any hope at all of catching Tonis. She needed to be closer than that as they come around to start this last lap because she doesn't have the advantage of the draft right now. And she's certainly not going to catch him unless he makes a mistake. Well, Tony's knows this track. He now calls it. He's from Estonia originally, but now he lives in Lundeland, Illinois. He calls this his home track. He knows it. He has won and run so many races here. And he, was, he said, I'm going home. 
And, you know, finally, after all these tracks that he doesn't know and he's had problems on, this is comfortable territory for him, and uh, it is showing here in spades. And we expect to see that white flag fly as he comes up over the top of the hill. This time by white flag. We are on our final lap. And Zolzman, Calvin, I said it, with all of the crashes that we've seen, Zolzman suddenly he can back into the points. Well, he's certainly looking a lot better now than he was a few laps ago, but it hasn't been a smooth weekend for Charles. They really struggled with straight line speed, scratching the heads, changed the motor. That didn't fix anything. Working with the downforce setups, really started to trim the car out. Then they started to go slower on the lap time. So he's actually running quite a bit of downforce in the car. But here today, I think that crash in the warm-up, I just spoke to Carlos Bebeda. He said the car is very loose. We didn't really have a time to go through everything and fine-tune and fine-check everything on the setup pad. So Charles is just trying to hang on and go to Montreal with a good points lead. Well, Brian, I would say it's that kind of a performance from a driver that ultimately builds the character of a champion is uh, the adversity. You do what you can and what you have to do. Very intelligent and measured approach that both Charles and the entire team taking. That's what they need to do to win a championship. Take what we can do, do our best job today, and then go to the final round. Kazimut's doing a fantastic job today. As you pointed out, he was fast from the time they unloaded off the truck. The other person that you got to give big kudos to, Catherine Legg. Yeah. Been very, very quick throughout the weekend, but she has done a great job. We didn't think anybody had anything for Tony's Kazimut. She's been the only one that could apply the pressure. Well, if it ends like this, which it will, Mike, as we're halfway through our final lap, that lead is 25 points. So Kazmitz has a sniff of the championship going into the final round. And that does put some pressure on Zola. I mean, you know, you, you can't crash. You can't break. You've got to be on your game. All Kazmitz has to do is just drive to the front and try to win. That's a gimme for him in terms of the mission. Zolzman might be feeling a little bit of heat. And there's Catherine Legg, who is not in the championship hunt. But, boy, I'll tell you what, an unbelievable season uh, for her rookie year in this championship with three rims already. But here we go, Kazmitz. One last time out of turn 14 onto the straight, and he's been waiting for this one a long, long time. There's the team. They're looking. They're watching. He is whistling up the hill, and for Tony Skazmitz, there is the fist pump over to the wall by the team right there. He has done it. He has won, and he has put himself back into the championship chase. Not easy, mind you, but he's there. He's got a long way to go still, but at least he is back in the hunt, and he's shown what, he, what we do all season long, yeah. but what bad luck has taken away from him a little bit over the last few rounds, and that is that he is a winner. Third win, as a matter of fact, this season has very, been very quick. Let's check in with Calvin Fish. Well, down here with the jubilant crew, Alan O'Leary, the engineer. What a way to come back off the disappointment in the last couple of rounds. Just awesome, Calvin. I mean, he just did a stellar job all weekend. This is home for us, and I haven't looked where Zoltzman ended up, but I think we're still mathematically in with a shot at the championship, so it just doesn't get any better than this, buddy. You're right, mate. Great emotion down here. The championship will go down to the wire in Montreal, Greg. And you talked about him being the engineer, but I went over to talk to Tony three, four times in his paddock, and every time he was on his knees working on the engine, changing this, he is very involved in the mechanical end of this team as well, which makes it all the more sweet. We'll talk to him when we come back. Well, Tony's Kazimierz visits Victory Lane for the third time this year, but this one has to be sweet on home turf. Yes, we were looking forward here, and uh, everything was by the plan. Team kept me cool and calm in the race. I mean, track was a little different than yesterday, and and the car wasn't exactly what was yesterday, but uh, they kept me cool, and we made some adjustments in the car, and. And it came back live in the mid to late, and so it was. What about those early laps? I mean, Catherine had a great start, and then she really put the pressure on that move in 13. It was pretty exciting. Yes, it was like a deja vu last year. I did the same thing with Danica Patrick. So this year with Catherine Legg. I mean, just uh, women don't give up. They are like cats, you know. <laughs> so, but you got to play their game to win them. So. It worked out, and the uh, team and everybody did fantastic job. We are very happy to, to win this race. So, fantastic. Super job today. Well done. Thank you. Okay, he just purred along. Oh, look at that. There's a. <laughs> tell you what, Seepkins is going to be a fun place to be tonight with Tony Skazman. Let's take a look at the points now. As we said, they are very much still in the hunt. 
Only 25 back of Zolzman, who really got some help with some of those incidents late in the race. Catherine Leg, fortunately out of the championship, but a really good battle there for second, third, fourth in the points championship at this point. And Calvin, for Catherine Leg, a tremendous finish and another a just remarkable season. A great race. Uh, Catherine, you've won three races, but I think that may have been your best performance of the year. Great job today. Yeah, you know, Tony's just outclassed me then, I guess. I thought if I could stay behind him and I was in his draft and... I thought, last lap, you know, end of the straight and I'll have it. But the uh, the traffic played into my hands and as soon as I lost him, he just, I couldn't get anywhere near him again. But second, we'll take second. Well done, superb job today. Thanks very much. Well, second at a brand new track to her for somebody who knows it like Kazmitz and the run she put in, absolutely you take that. Let's take a look now at the uh, results from the race at Kazmitz with the win. Leg, Dan DeLeo, a great comeback drive. He was there, went back, came back. Martinez and Unser, that was an exceptionally exciting battle. Uh, really fun observing that one. Kyle Kelly right there in sixth. Zolzman, there's that seventh. And for Shuto, you kind of wonder. Pole in Denver, then uh, faded just a little bit here. And for Christopher Pry, I think he showed he's going to be somebody to watch, even though he had that off. Uh, about mid-race. He was very, very impressive indeed. Speaking of Zolzman and being able to close it back up again, Calvin, he's with you. Charles, it wasn't the easiest of days. You had the crash in the warm-up. The team worked frantically to get it together. How about the performance? Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy because uh, the team worked fantastically and uh, we just had a few minutes before the start and obviously you get some problems with that. Uh, so we had a lot of oversteer today and on a track like this you don't want that. But I'm very happy to uh, finish the race where I did. Well, he hung in there well, Greg. He'll go with the lead to Montreal in one week's time. And uh, he's still got a pretty good pad, so things are looking okay. And you, you got to give credit to the team. Uh, that team, everybody was lined up, and as he said, suddenly you saw the tug in that car coming up, trying to get to the pit position. It was that close. Working to the bitter end, and they've got the right mental attitude. He's happy with that seventh place finish. He's happy with those points. He'll he'll fight for that championship when he gets to Montreal. Yep, Condor Motorsports. Uh, boy, what a job they did. Let's get back down to Calvin. Well, the final podium finish at Dan DeLeo. Dan, you haven't driven a car since last year. Way to come back, mate. Great job. Thank you very much, Colin. I mean, it's great to be back in the car, first of all. Uh, you know, I'm really thankful for the opportunity Arms Up Motorsports and Jose Paradis gave to me. I mean, uh, I got a phone call two weeks ago, and I guess, uh, you know, it's brought us to this point here. You know, it's great to be back in the car and, more importantly, on the podium. With the prize money, any chance we'll see you in Montreal next week? I'm, I'm working hard at it. You know, it'd be great to, uh, to race in Canada in front of the home fans, and uh, you could uh, better believe that I'll be doing whatever I can before Montreal to get it done. You've been competitive in all of the junior formula, and now you make your debut in an Atlantic car. What was the difference? What's it like jumping up from a Mazda car into this? You know what? It's, uh, it's one of these things that we've been, you know, as drivers, we've been doing this for so long that it was just, uh, you know, the next logical step. Um, you know, I was, like I said, I'm grateful for the opportunity. You know, I, I feel like I belong in this series from the beginning of the year. And I'm going to work really hard to put a program together for 2006. Hopefully we'll see you back. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. See that guy in the beard behind him? That's Jose Paradas, who does a lot of national-level Atlantic racing and races Formula One cars. And I'm not talking the old stuff. I'm talking recent Ferraris and Benettons in historic racing. Our next race coming up, Montreal, Quebec, the final round. Round 12, Saturday, September 3rd, 9 p.m. Eastern. That is going to run, and this championship is on. And uh, i tell you what, that circuit is also just an incredible racetrack. Oh, it's just a fantastic facility. I can remember running there in an Atlantic car, and I can tell you these young guns, when they go up there, they'll get the chills. Montreal, what a great place. Circuit du Gilles Villeneuve, just that name pretty much says it all. Well, we've had an absolutely phenomenal race.